any adamant fan of Star Wars probably knows that the Jedi are what I would consider to be weapon snobs. So uncivilized. They have a disdain for anything that doesn't take an inordinate amount of skill to use. They're very entrenched in the old traditional ways, the old traditional styles. And much of what they're based off of from George Lucas and his own inspiration comes from samurai culture. And one thing that's true about samurai culture, even though it doesn't show up much in film, is they prize the bow more than the katana or the sword. The Jedi, I think, are missing out on a good ranged weapon. A little bit about my backstory with Star Wars. That was my first love. Before fantasy and Lord of the Rings, it was Star Wars. And a lot of people probably know the name Dash Rendar came from Shadows of the Empire. That was a novel before it was a game, and I read that, I think, in junior high. And that became my prime character uh, that I really was drawn to. And if, and if you don't know who Dash Rendar is, picture Han Solo with basically giant shoulder pads, so like Han Solo and Duke Nukem. And that's basically what you have there. Star Wars was my first love. Over the past few years, we've had a bit of a tumultuous relationship. I feel like they've changed. They feel like they're making the right decision. Can't quite agree eye to eye. However, unfortunately for Star Wars fans, there's still the expanded universe. And even though a lot of it they say isn't canon anymore, there's a lot of rich fodder and things we can pull from there and really make great stories, even as just fans. So even if what's being pushed out there isn't a solid um, you know, comparison to what we grew up with, there's still lots of fun and lore to be had in that universe, and we're gonna break that down today. So when it comes to bows in the world of Star Wars, they are not unheard of in any way. If you go back to the Battle of Endor, obviously the Ewoks had bows. They used those to defeat the Horribly inept stormtroopers, <laughs> troopers, and basically what I can only describe as pure embarrassment for the Empire. But those, of course, aren't the bows that I'm talking about. I don't want traditional bows. I want sci-fi bows. I want bows that look cool, even if they're not practical. Clone Wars, and you have the really, really cool bows of the Night Sisters and the Night Brothers in Dothmir, and those type of plasma bows. Yep, figured it was about time. Apparently the force was not with me on that one because um, the string broke. Now that was actually not a bow breaking. You can probably see I'll play it back in slow-mo. It's actually a string right here. So when that pulled back, that exploded. It's still not good for the bow. Stuff like that can still damage it. It's not meant to take that kind of stress and just immediately dissipate it. Um, but it looks to be in good condition. I don't see any fractures on it at the time. I uh, will keep trying it out. And this was the 130 pound bow as well um so it wasn't as like pow impactful as probably if the 160 did it or the 165 but um still <laughs> that'll wake you up right, we're back i'm giving the 130 pound bow rest because i want to make sure i check it closely for any fractures before i start using it again but anyways going back to it the night sisters and night brothers of dothmir had those really cool plasma bows and so that's kind of what i'm going to run with the big thing about this video is i don't want to try and say why things don't work i want to see why they can work and how they can make them cooler for Jedi and characters like that in the Star Wars universe. If the Jedi were at their peak, it would have been really unlikely for them to have a sidearm. But if you go later, you have the scoundrel type Jedis, Kyle Katarn or Cal Kestis, and they usually have a sidearm on their body for range attacks. And with Jedi, if you have a lightsaber, it's not uncommon for them to have a throw with that. So why can't you take the plasma bow and take the technology behind that that they used to make lightsabers and make it into something that's devastating, gives you some range, and also keeps that same kind of warrior class mentality the Jedi had. Not too many parts to a lightsaber. I'm going to talk about this like it's real world physics because that's where the fun is. Who wants to break down what's real and what's fantasy? It's, it's more fun just to talk about things with the rules the universe has put forth. So in the hilt, you have the Deatium power cell, which kind of powers it and self recharging. Then you have the lightsaber crystal, the kyber crystal, and you have a focusing lens. There's a few other parts, but that's going to create the plasma beam for the light table. And there's like a focusing thing where you can make it larger or you can change the length of the lightsaber 
or anything like that. So there's, we have the bow and I'm gonna use the Night Sister bow that the Night Sister Hunters use and Omega uses in the Clone Wars series as well um, to kind of break this down. So on that one, it has, that one basically has like a carbon or metal type base for it. The string is plasma and then it has like a plasma charger on there as well that creates the um, arrow, which is also pure plasma. So that's great as well, because as opposed to actually having to pull a string and knock it, you literally can just get there and just rip it out as fast as you can pull that. So you have a really great speed advantage over like a traditional bow. But again, we're talking about far in the future. So why would you even use this thing if you could just pull out a blaster? Ah, more questions. Wonderful. First thing I think you have going for you is that with the frame here, or the actual stave of the bow, you could add what's called a cortosis weave to it. In Star Wars, there are different types of metals, obviously all make-believe. You have Beskar, which is the most well-known one, but there's cortosis, which can be added to different things. That's what's on the vibro blades to stop the lightsaber from basically going through it. So you can add that weave to it here, so you have something that can basically deflect lightsabers. On the back of it there, you have that plasma blade, so you literally have a plasma weapon, which is gonna be looking very similar to like a Klingon type weapon, I forget the name of it but you have an additional backup here. So if you get in close, you have a relatively usable self-defense weapon with plasma. So it's basically cutting just like a saber. Now, the other thing you have going for you, of course, is range, and that kind of goes without saying. But the reason I bring that up is because, like I said, George is a lot of samurai culture. And in the samurai culture, while nowadays we see the katana as the big reigning supreme thing, bow skill, was much more important and much more coveted in that time to the upper echelon of soldiers. So, why not take advantage of that and kind of work that into the series? Take the elements of the plasma bow and you incorporate it there, there are some really good benefits can be added to it because of the futuristic type technology. First thing is that unlike arrows, like these ones here for the war bow, which are massive, plasma really has almost no weight to it. So it's like a frictionless thing just shooting out of there. So you have a much higher potential for a high, high speed on that arrow or on that plasma bolt, let's call it. Secondly, you have great armor piercing capability. It's gonna be similar to a blaster because it doesn't need to be accelerated dramatically because it's so hot in temperature that it's gonna blow through anything that's not like plasma proof armor. It could finally set up a proper ambush and have some distance between them and their target before engaging. Now, again, it's like against the creed, I think, to kind of be defensive, but in the Clone Wars, there's obviously a lot of wars going on. So they knew that basically front, so they basically knew that confrontation was going to occur. So there's no reason why I wouldn't want to set up an ambush with basically shooting what would be the equivalent of lightsaber bolts. It's kind of on brand for them, I would say. About an arrow basically being weightless is you don't need a heavy duty bow to push it far down range. So if I'm trying to create max damage and impact, I have a 155 pound war bow here because I want that big punch, that big velocity when it's coming down range against someone who's armored. Ugh. But if you have a bolt that's able to go through almost any type of armor, it can be light so you could rapid fire it much easier. Think a la Lars Anderson, where you're just basically flicking that back and it's just doing massive damage all over the battlefield, hundreds of yards down range, because you're a Jedi, why not? Why can't you hit something that's 500 yards away? Anyone who's played Knights of the Old Republic knows Revan and Malak and basically the Jedi Civil Wars. And during that time, most all the weapons by the Mandalorians and other people had cortosis in it because it would work against lightsabers. There was also a huge jump in personal energy shields, so blasters became less effective. Kind of think a la Dune, where basically you have energy shields and hand-to-hand -hand melee is going to be the most important thing to do. Well, there's no reason, I feel, why you wouldn't be able to take some sort of blade like this put a cortosis weave on it or put Beskar in it or anything like that, something that could punch through the best armor that they have. And that's gonna be placed on here. So you have a tip that's gonna be able to go through personal energy shields better than a blaster would because you're firing a projectile on that tip that's gonna interrupt that personal shield. It's not gonna be traveling at that high, high rate, but you're gonna have a much better chance of getting through someone from a distance if they have that, as opposed to just shooting a blaster and not being able to get any results or any damage at all. Now, could you make it work against Beskar? Well, it would be really expensive to try to furnish tips in Beskar, especially if you're losing them. But I think for someone like the Mandalorians or warrior culture like that, having that in your arsenal would be great because it would be something that could really deflect against things that could possibly penetrate other Beskar because it's going at a faster velocity. 
So that may do it. So if you have Beskar versus Beskar on a bodkin tip point, it's probably gonna punch through. And so I think for a warrior culture like the Mandalorians, it could make sense to have something like that as well. And even like as an anti-Jedi countermeasure. According to legends, the cord is just weave if it was a really good quality, it could short out a lightsaber if it hit it. So, I mean, just think if a Jedi tries to deflect um, an arrow with the Cortezus weave tip, and it's a really high quality one, it could short out that lightsaber and it could take them out for just enough to get a different arrow in there or a different shot in there or a blaster in there. So it could really mix things up like it's a great alternate strategy to have those in your quiver so you can kind of get them to short that saber out and then do some damage after that. What are some potential logistical issues with a plasma or an energy bow as it would be said? Well the first thing I think would be the actual mechanism of the string using with the bow. With a wooden bow the speed of the bow comes from its return to its original rest state. So you can see here we have basically a straight stave of an unstrung 130 pound bow. Right here we have the 155 pound bow up here. So when you pull it back and you release, and I'm not going to dry fire, don't worry. The actual power is going to come from the wood returning to its rested state. So I'm not going to dry fire because that's really bad for the bow. But with something like this, my only thought is <laughs> if you have a string, you can't really put that string on. It would have to stay on there indefinitely. So you could have some sort of tensile cord on there, maybe, and plasma run through it. I don't really see the benefit of the plasma being the string, aside from it looking cool. I feel like you'd be better suited with just a plasma bolt, but not necessarily a plasma string because I don't see how that would be set on there to actually have it so it would go back to its original rested state quickly to create any sort of velocity. The other issue I would see would be perpetual dry fire. So if you dry fire a bow, meaning you pull a bow back and you release it with nothing there, you have a high chance, especially with higher pound bows, of them breaking or obliterating. It's called dry firing. So if you have a weightless arrow, on there and you're drawing and loosing it even if you have some sort of metal frame on there it's going to put a lot of stress on the bow so it really has to be a very specific type of metal or woven in with something in their best scar let's say for example as a mulligan to keep it from fracturing over time because you're literally letting it go with no weight on it and that can damage the bow even if you have a compound bow that's going to damage it you just don't don't you you just don't dry fire bows in general so that could be something that i see would be a logistical issue that could come up, you know, in this fantasy fictional world. And finally, the last issue I see would be that of stealth. A bow is primarily a stealth-based weapon, but if you have something that has a plasma string that lights up bright as day when you're trying to loose it, if you're in the dark, it's going to give your position away. So, I mean, it could be used for daytime operations and things like that, not necessarily stealth-based, but that would be the other problem is that you have this thing that's basically the temperature of like the sun. <laughs> and it's going to light up and it's going to be visible from way, way far away. So you can't really do those stealth attacks in the same way. That would make it a little bit difficult to pull off. How exactly do I see this shaking out for the Jedi Sith or Mandalorian mercenary? I feel like it'd be great to have a bow because what it would do is you can take a few plasma shots with the plasma bow. But like I said, you could also have those cortosis weave arrow tips in there. So you can take a few pot chops with the plasma, then once it's time, you pull out your specialized arrow and the Jedi tries to block it and bam, you're going to go ahead and you're going to hit them. It's going to go straight through the lightsaber into the individual. So it's a really great potential way to mix things up a little bit and have that range on your side in a futuristic universe. So I think that it could really be a cool thing if implemented well. However, the last and most important test, does it pass the Not to me. What Star Wars and sci-fi most of the time is all about. You can find Neil deGrasse Tyson, you can find all sorts of things that are wrong with the science behind it, but really does it create a cool look? Does it tell a story? And I think that's one of the biggest things is, you know, if you have a Jedi that makes their own bow, let's say, and they have their own kyber crystal, and they have their own color, let's say it's green or let's say it's blue, it's going to have a lot more impact and there's a story behind the user. And I think that it could couple very well with that Bushido and that samurai type way of life, that Western feel to it. It's not quite like Star Trek where it's very science heavy, so to speak. It's a lot more flashy and it's a lot more about style points. And I think that a Jedi bow could have some style points in 